Hello dear students, this is Dr. Shabana Begum, Associate Professor in Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bangalore, presenting a talk on the topic, Negative Interspecific Interactions under Session 7 and the topic, Community Ecology, pertaining to B.S. Zoology 5th semester under the paper entitled, Environmental Biology and Ethology. In my previous lectures on population ecology, I had discussed about the various attributes or characteristics of population and its regulation. Today, I am going to discuss negative interspecific interactions in a community such as antibiotics, competition, predation and parasitism. The contents are again the interspecific interactions which are negative that is the antibiotics, computation, predation and parasitism and the learning objectives are to understand the various negative interspecific interactions such as antibiotics, computation, predatism and parasitism. So before starting the definition, let me give you a small introduction about the topic. So in an ecosystem, there are many kinds of organisms as we know which occupy different trophic levels and different niches and these form an integral part of the ecosystem and all the organisms are bound to interact with one another. Some forms may have a very close relationship while the others may just share the habitat with them without any obvious interactions. Some forms show continuous interactions while others may form temporary association. And these relationships are named according to the benefit each partner derives from the other. So what is a community? As we know, community is a group of several plants and animal species living together with mutual adjustment and beneficial interactions in a natural area. And in a community, organisms share the same habitat growing in a uniform environment. For example, a forest, a grassland, a desert or a pond is natural communities. So the community ecology on the other hand is the study of the organization and functioning of communities which are assemblages of interacting populations of the species living within a particular area or habitat. It represents the population of all species living and interacting in an area at a particular time and it encompasses many types of ecological interactions that continue to change over time. For example, a forest community includes the plant community, all the trees, birds, squirrels, deer, foxes, fungi, fishes in a forest stream, insects and all other species living there are migrating seasonally. So the key points for this topic are the definition of ecology and community ecology etc. An eco ecological community consists of all the populations of all the different species that live together in a particular area which I had just told you. Then the interactions between different species in a community are called interspecific interactions. That inter means between and also there are intraspecific interactions where intra means within. So interactions may take place between the members belonging to two different species or belonging to the same species. So different types of interspecific interactions have different effects on the two participants which may be either positive, negative or neutral. And the main types of interspecific interactions include competition, predation, mutualism, commensalism and parasitism. One more word you have to know is neutralism which is not an interaction actually. This kind of situation exists when there is actually no benefit or loss between the individuals. 
the two individuals can just exist in an ecosystem without harming each other or being useful to the other. For example, the plants in an ecosystem do not interact with the carnivores. <coughs> Excuse me. The fruits born by the plants are not useful to the predator farms. Then another example is the interaction between the sheep and the pigs in a farm. The two do not show any kind of interaction that can benefit or harm the other. They do not compete for the same food. They are not territorial or not aggressive and they are not beneficial to the other in any way. And each can live with the other and can also exist without the other. Fine. So here let us talk about the negative interspecific interactions that is the antibiosis, competition, predation and parasitism. As we know in negative interactions one or both the species are harmed in this type one species may benefit at the cost of the other. Now let us take a closer look at each of these type of negative interspecific interactions the first being antibiosis. So antibiosis occurs when one organism is damaged or killed by another through a chemical secretion. The best example for antibiosis be or I mean salism being when organisms interact and one species is unaffected by the other organisms have a negative effect. Penicillium is a group of common molds that is the fungi many of which produce antibiotics such as penicillin. These antibiotics kill certain types of bacteria that is the bacteria which cause malarial fever. So the antibiotics produced by the molds are simply a waste product produced during their metabolism or as their breakdown product of their food. So while the waste product kills bacteria, the penicillium are unaffected. The other examples are in the natural environment, the chemicals do not allow the survival of other microorganisms. For example, the soft coral zoanthus shows antagonistic behavior by producing some chemical which inhibits the growth of other forms in the same tank or area. The blue-green algae microcystis produce a toxic substance like hydroxyl amine that causes the death of the fish and even the cattle that drink the water. Chlorellin, a toxic substance and the product of chlorella vulgaris and alga inhibit the growth of the diatoms called Nitzgia frustulum. And in turn, this diatom inhibits the rate of growth of chlorella vulgaris. Next example being the growth of the protozoan Gymnodinium brevis, a dinoflagellate which causes the death of fish by depolarizing nerves and muscular system. Noctilica causes red tides in the sea which results in the death of fishes over several miles in the sea. Some plants produce toxic substances to kill the herbivores feeding on them. The bushy plant Halogeton glomeratus with succulent leaves produces oxalic acid in its leaves. The goats that eat them die within a few hours as oxalic acid combines with calcium in the blood and causes death. The next interaction is competition. So competition is the negative interaction between two species belonging either to the same species or different species with the same needs. In this type of interaction both the species suffer thus interspecific competition occurs when different species compete for a resource in short supply. Strong competition can lead to competitive exclusion where the local elimination of a competing species occur. The competitive exclusion principle which we have already studied under session 3 that is the concept of ecological niches. It states that 
two species competing for the same limiting resources cannot coexist in the same place because in the long run one species displaces the other that means parnesh only one species can survive some examples for the but better understanding of the concept of competition are the plants growing in the same area compete for water nutrients and sometimes sunlight different carnivores animals compete for the same prey for example migratory birds such as flamingos that visit compete with the resident fish for the zooplanktons in the lake Sometimes even when the resources is in plenty the presence of a competitor species will eliminate another species this was experimentally proved by gauss and other ecologists it is observed that species facing competition will evolve mechanisms that promote coexistence rather than exclusion resource partitioning is such a mechanism in this two species which compete for the same resource could avoid competition by feeding at different times or have different foraging patterns the competition are of three major types they are the interference competition which occurs directly between the individuals apparent competition and exploitation competition both of which occurs indirectly between the individuals now let us learn about interference competition it involves preempt to use and often defense of a resource that allows a more aggressive species to increase its access to and share of the resource to the detriment of other species interference competition occurs when competitors physically deprive other organisms access to resources preemptive competition occurs when a competitor recruits to and dominates a habitat monopolizing all available space precluding the establishment of potential competitors During interference competition organisms interact directly by fighting for scarce resources for example large aphids which are the insects defend feeding sites on cottonwood leaves by kicking and showing smaller aphids from better sites the apparent competition occurs when two individuals that do not directly compete for resources affect each other indirectly by being prey for the same predator for example consider a hawk the predator that preys both on squirrels and mice in this relationship if the squirrel population increases then the mouse population may be positively affected since more squirrels will be available as prey for the hawks however an increased squirrel population may eventually lead to a high higher population of hawks requiring more prey thus negatively affecting the mice through increased predation pressure as the squirrel population declines the opposite effect could also occur through a decrease in food resources for the predator if the squirrel population decreases it can indirectly lead to a reduction in the mouse mouse population since they might or they will be the more abundant food source for the hawks next exploitation competition it occurs when individuals interact indirectly as they compete for common resources like the territory prey or food here the use of the resource by one individual will decrease the amount available for other individuals in exploitation competition the competition between organisms still result in the depletion of the amount of resources thereby limiting the availability of these resources for other organisms despite of the lack of direct interaction similar to interference competition the exploitation competition applies to both intraspecific and interspecific competition now what is antagonism let's learn about it so in ecology it is an association between organisms in which one benefits at the expense of the other 
because organisms are concentrated packages of energy and nutrients in themselves they can become the objects of antagonistic interactions although antagonism is commonly thought of as an association between different species it may also occur between members of the same species through competition and cannibalism regardless of the kinds of foods they eat there are patterns of species negative interactions such as parasitism grazing and predation let's discuss what are predators and what is predation so predation is a positive negative interaction refers to interaction where one species the predator kills and eats the other the prey you can see the pictures of a tiger which is a predator and a deer which is a prey so predation is a method to transfer the energy to higher trophic levels if there is a decline in the predator population the population of prey will increase so predation keeps the prey population in control which otherwise would lead to very high population densities and cause ecosystem instability this is seen when exotic or alien species are introduced into a new area it spreads fast because of the absence of its natural predators during this interaction the prey species have evolved various defensive methods to avoid being preyed upon some species exhibit deceptive and advertising coloration to avoid or shock the predators mimicry is another adaptation evolved in some species these methods lessen the impact of predation herbivores are the predators for plants plants have also evolved various defensive mechanisms to our to avoid predation they are as follows thorns in acacia and cactus toxic chemicals produced by some plants that harm the plants such as the callotropis aweed produces a highly poisonous cardiac glycoside and are avoided by the grazing animals the various chemicals produced to keep away the predators include nicotine caffeine quinine strychnine opium etc the best known example of predation involves carnivorous interactions in which one animal consumes another like the wolves hunting moose owls hunting mice or shrews hunting worms and insects the feeding adaptations of predators include strong and sharp pointed claws then uh, canines which are again strong and pointed the fangs stingers and the poison then animals also display a great variety of defensive adaptations some species also have warning coloration that alerts potential predators to their defenses other harmless species may mimic this warning coloration so mimicry is a defensive mechanism seen in many insects and higher forms like the amphibians and reptiles these forms have an ability to blend with the surrounding due to their protective coloration so then the prey also show certain defensive adaptations where the behavioral defenses include hiding fleeing, fleeing then forming herds or schools self defense and alarm calls the animals also have morphological and physiological defense adaptations such as the cryptic coloration where the example which is shown here is called canyon tree frog where they camouflage and makes prey difficult to spot then the ape aposematic coloration where the animals with effective chemical defense poison are often exhibit bright warning coloration where the predators are particularly cautious in dealing with prey that display such coloration the example being the poison dart frog which shows warning coloration which is seen in this slide 
then then there is what is known as the mimicry which is of two type Batesian mimicry where a harmless species mimics a harmful one for example a hawk moth larva mimics the green parrot snail the other type being mullerian mimicry that is the two yak yeah, where the unpalatable species mimic each other for example the cuckoo bee mimics the yellow jacket insect then why is predation important predation is important because it may restrict the distribution of or reduce the abundance of the prey species predation along with competition is a major type of interaction that can influence the organization of communities predation is a major selective force and many adaptations of organisms have their explanation in predator prey coevolution finally the predation derives it drives the movement of energy and nutrients in ecosystems like predation predation in case of plants here you say herbivory yet another interaction that is much like predation is herbivory which is when an individual feeds on all or part of a photosynthetic organism that is a plant or algae possibly killing it. An important difference between herbivory and predation is that herbivory does not always lead to the death of the individual. Herbivory is often the foundation of food webs since it involves the consumption of primary producers where the organisms that convert light energy to a chemical energy through photosynthesis occur. Herbivores are classified based on the part of the plant consumed. For example, granivores eat seeds, grazers eat grasses and low shrubs, browsers eat leaves from trees or shrubs and frugivores eat fruits. Plants also have evolved adaptations to herbivory by producing thorns, sticky substances, irritating toxins on piercing structures and bad tasting chemicals in leaves. Finally, the parasitism, which is also one of the negative interspecific interaction. Here, the two species have a close, lasting interaction that is beneficial to one, that is the parasite, and harmful to the other, that is the host. So, it also is a positive negative interaction like predation. In this, one organism derives nutrition from the host and harms it. And in this association, parasites may live in, that is endoparasites, or on, that is the ectoparasite, the body of the host. The examples of endoparasites are tapeworm, roundworm, threadworm, plasmodium, etc. And ectoparasites are the ticks, the mites, lice, leech, etc. Cascuta is a plant parasite and has lost its ability to photosynthesize since it derives nourishment from the host plant. Parasites typically do not kill their hosts but can significantly weaken them, indirectly causing the host to die via illness, effects on metabolism, lower overall health and increased predation potential. Parasites are host specific in such a way that both the host and the parasites have co-evolved. The parasites also have evolved special adaptations to live successfully in a host. They are as follows. Loss of sense organs, presence of adhesive organs or suckers, the high rate of reproduction and exhibit brood parasitism. For example, in case of birds, this is seen in the cuckoo or quail bird. The cuckoo lays its eggs in the nest of the crow and these eggs resemble the eggs of crow. The crow incubates the eggs and takes care of them. Finally, the outcome of the study, what you have learned that is a biological community is an assemblage of populations of various species living close enough for potential interaction. 
Ecologists call relationships between species in a community as interspecific interactions. The interspecific interactions can affect the survival and reproduction of each species. The effects can be positive, negative or no effect. So, once again, with this information, I will conclude my lecture. And before that, to know whether you have understood the lesson or not, I want you to answer the following multiple choice questions. The first question, the association in which one species adversely affects the population of another but itself remains unaffected is called. The options are A. Amensalism, B. Neutralism, C. Predation and D. Parasitism. The answer is the option A. Amensalism. Next question, which one of the following about computation is correct? Options are A. Population regulation, B. Elimination of weaker species, C. Density controls and D. All the above. So the answer is D. All the above. When the predator population increases, what happens to the prey population? The options are A. Increases, B. Decreases. C die and D stay the same. So the answer being the option B it decreases. Next question. In this type of symbiotic interaction which involves the death of one of the interacting species is called A parasitism, B parasitoidism, C root parasitism and D is symbiosis. The answer is it's called parasitoidism, that is the option B. Next question, the cuckoo bird laying eggs in a wobbler nest to trick the wobbler into raising the offspring is an example of A, parasitoidism, B, brood parasitism, C, commensalism and D, mutualism. The, exam, the answer being the B option, brood parasitism. Next MCQ, name the species interaction where a mosquito feeds on human blood and transfers a disease. Options are A, computation, B, parasitism, C, predation and D, mutualism. The answer being B, that is parasitism. The next question is, name the species interaction of the following, a killer whale kills and eats a seal. Options are A. Commensalism, B. Predation, C. Mutualism and D is Competition. Then the answer is option B. It is called Predation. Name the species interaction of the following. Two bears fighting over the same mate. Options are A. Predation, B. Mutualism and C. Competition, D is Parasitism. The answer being the option C which is computation. Then here are few references for you to go through for further understanding of the topic. Thank you.